and Baltimore is Pimlico, Old Hilltop, the second oldest racetrack in America. Hello, I'm Jim McKay reporting from a very chimney, chilly Pimlico. Kentucky Derby behind us, the Preakness lying ahead right on this racetrack next week. As a matter of fact, a number of the Preakness entries are already on the scene here. But today, we turn to the country's older horses. These are four-year-olds and up. The two most famous, of course, are not quite ready to begin their 1990 campaign. That would be Sunday Silence and Easy Goer, and we expect to see them later on in the summertime. But all of the other top horses are on hand, and so are their trainers, the likes of Charlie Whittingham, Wayne Lucas, Ron McAnally, Roger Atfield from Canada with the Canadian Triple Crown winner with approval. Very tough group of males with total earnings of almost $9 million among them. And today they're racing for a purse of $1 million. Against them, however, the filly named Gorgeous. Now, she's never tested male opponents until today, but recently she defeated the outstanding filly by a koa, and so her handlers have decided to go for broke against the males in this richest race ever in Maryland history. So let's take a look at the specifics, the conditions of this race. One million dollars guaranteed is the purse. The distance a mile and three sixteenths is exactly the same as next week's Preakness Stakes. Track fast today. They say the temperature 61 degrees. I don't believe it. It feels like it's about 42 with a chill wind blowing. Here are the odds at this moment. Wind splitter, local horse at 15 to 1. Ruhlman at 5 to 2, the speed horse. The Canadian with approval at 9 to 1. Silver Survivor, an outsider at 40 to 1. The favorite is opening burst at 6 to 5. Here is Gordon the Philly at 5 to 1, third choice. Music Merci at 30 to 1. Criminal Type at 9 to 1, that's Wayne Lucas's. Me Selecto at 25 to 1, could be an overlay and a good bet. DeRoche at 35 to 1. These then are the odds on the race, but this is a race with more than just today's occasion. It has a long history. Uh, it started more than half a century ago. So for more on the lore of the Pimlico special, here's my ABC colleague Dave Johnson. Well, special is not just the word engraved on our trophy today. What we have in this race are the elements that make our sport so special, so distinctive, so particular. It's special when the great stables like Calumet endure. It's special when tradition is honored again, and it's very special when you have a unique matchup like a good filly against the Colts. Maryland racing fans were accustomed to the very best of thoroughbred sport here at Old Hilltop long before War Admiral won the first Pimlico Special in 1937. And the race history is intertwined with the lore of Calumet Farm. In fact, five Calumet horses have won it, and the devil's red and blue silks fly strongly even today, as they did in 1948 when Citation was so good, no others showed up to race against him. And in 1942, when Whirlaway galloped in a walkover. Now, almost half a century later, Calumet is back. This year with criminal type, powerful winner of the San Antonio handicap for trainer D. Wayne Lucas. Another Calumet star, Twilight Tear, at age three in 1944, became the first and only Philly to win the Pimlico Special. And now, out of the clouds comes a millionaire trying to beat Calumet and the others. She is gorgeous, who equaled the track record while defeating Bayakoa in her last start. She faces the Colts today. Can she beat him? Well, Dave, of course, that's the big question here, and let's see if we can get another reading on that from Charles E. Canny. Charles E., what do you think the Phillies' chances are? Well, Jim, I think she's got a chance, but it'll be really difficult for her. You've pointed out how tough these Colts are, and she gets absolutely no break in the weights today. She gets a five-pound Philly allowance, but still, theoretically, she's giving weight to a Colt as tough as opening verse. But she's earned her chance to join that elite group of Phillies who can beat the boys. And I'll tell you one thing, Jim, she'll be right there at the finish, because she always is. Well, she has been. If she's there at the finish day, today, however, she so won't be alone, because, as I said, this is a very, very tough field of of males that she's up against. Right now, let's take a look at some of the other contenders. There's a Triple Crown winner in today's race with approval. First winner of the Canadian Triple Crown in more than a quarter century. Here he was last July at Woodbine, winning the Queen's Plate, Canada's version of the Kentucky Derby by a nose with the Queen Mother herself looking on. It was the summer of a lifetime for trainer Roger Atfield. Well, it was a big thrill because A, it hadn't been, it's only been won twice in its history, and it hadn't been won for 26 years. And also, they put a million dollar bonus on the series this year, which was, um, so it was the right timing to, to, to do it. 
The red, white, and blue colors of patriotic industrialist Alan Paulson are easy to spot on the racetrack. And so's his entrant, opening burst. Here he was in England last year, finishing second to Epsom Derby winner Nashwan at 200 to 1. But his best performances have come since he arrived in the United States last December. This was his most recent victory in the Oakland Handicap. Owner Paulson won the Pimlico Special last year. He's the head of Gulfstream Jets and sees a similarity between Jets and Thoroughbreds. Thoroughbreds are just have a natural beauty. So are nice jet airplanes. So we got to train all our people to build quality in the aircraft and just like you got to train the horses to be a quality horse. So there, there's a, nothing comes easy. You got to put a lot of effort in anything to make it a champion. This is Ruhlman, the California lightning bolt. He'll burst out of the number two hole today in a blur and dare the others to catch him. That's what he did in the Santa Anita Handicap, the only other million-dollar handicap race in the country. This is a five-year-old horse at the peak of his form, trained by Charlie Whittingham, who also trained Sunday Silence. Might the two meet? Ruhlman keeps running like he is. They'll probably run into one another for sure. Nice entry to have if you're the trainer. And any horse is very fortunate to have a trainer like the Bald Eagle of the West. There he is in a live shot. Charlie Whittingham, the trainer of Rule Men, and there is the trophy. Isn't that a gorgeous one? The permanent trophy. And we'll return after this message now and a word from our ABC stations. We have a final update on the odds for the Pimlico Special of 1990. Wind split of the local horse, 16 to 1. Ruleman, the speed horse from California, 5 to 2. With approval from Canada, triple crown winner, 9 to 1. Silver Survivor, who is a survivor? That's a story for another day, 35 to 1. Opening burst, the favorite at 3 to 2 now. Gorgeous, the filly at 6 to 1. Music Messi, 24 to 1. Criminal type, Wayne Lucas's horse, 7 to 1. Me Selecto, trained by Angel Pena, 24 to 1. And DeRoche at 30 to 1. Now, this is a handicap, and that means that the horses carry different weights assigned by the director of racing here, Larry Abundy. Charles, let's go over those. All right, there you see it, Jim. There is a 10-pound spread in the weights. Ruhlman, obviously, top weight at 124, down to the local cold wind splitter. Now, there are a few key shifts in the weights here. We pointed out the fact that Gorgeous actually carries 117 pounds. She gets a 5-pound Philly sex allowance. Theoretically, she carries 122 pounds. An important thing we might point out here is that Ruhlman and Criminal type the seven pound spread between those two the last time criminal type was able to turn the tables on ruleman and beat him was with that same seven pound shift in the weight so the weight is a very important factor here today okay we have a microphone on dick lundy the trainer of opening burst dick uh, last year you came here your horse was something of a long shot he not only won but he set a track rec record the prospects would seem to be better going into the race this year what do you think I think so. I think these two horses are very comparable. This horse is trained extremely well, just like Blushing John did last year. Uh, I think off his win in Hot Springs in his last out, they bet him down much better today. But, uh, um, you know, I think he'll run a very, very good race today. How, how close are you going to have to stay to Ruhlman? Uh, I hope he comes away from the gate clean and stays close around the first turn. If he does, I left it up to Chris when to go to the other horse. But I would think somewhere between the 516th pole and the quarter pole, uh, I'm going to try to engage him. Okay, Dick, thank you very much, and good luck. Thank you. As we approach time for the start of the Pimlico Special. Anything to add, Charlesy? Well, we have to key off of what Dick Lundy was saying. The key to the race here is Ruhlman. He is the only speed in the race, and they cannot afford to let him steal away too far alone. There you see him wearing the blinkers. Charlie Whittingham says anybody who dares go with him won't go with him far. Yet there's a second flight of Colts, opening verse, gorgeous, criminal type, music mercy. They are going to hound him every foot of the way. He'll have to be a good horse indeed to repulse all the challenges they'll get from him. There's your local horse there, Jim. He's undefeated since they removed his blinkers. Comes from off the pace. Now. Absolutely. He's a much, much stronger horse this year than last year. Edgar Prado, a fine local jockey and some of the top jockeys in the world riding in this race today. Let's go up top down to the man who calls the race as always, Dave Johnson. Dave. And there's Gary Stevens. Hard to believe just 11 years ago this week, Gary rode his first winner of his career. He's in line and there's with approval. A million dollar purse this afternoon for this race. The winners share $600,000 and that means $96 per foot for the entire mile and 3 sixteenths. Well, with approval, is a bit fractious here as they try and load him into the big green monster, the starting gate of Pimlico. This is a mile and three sixteenths, a long run to the first, first turn. There'll be no problem in getting position. Silver Survivor is in. 
10 of 24 favorites have won. That's better than average, and you see the favorite there now, the five-horse opening verse at 3-2. to two. Longest prices on the board, Silver Survivor at 35 and DeRoche at uh, 30. I wouldn't be surprised if either of them would win. I think they're certainly value there. Long shots. Music Merci. Eric Blind is the starter here, back, as he Matt. has been starting races since 1980. And one more, DeRoche with Herb McCall. They're all in line. And they're off. And Music Merci came into criminal type at the start. Ruhlman away cleanly and in front toward the inside. Opening verse is second. Then on the far outside, here comes Criminal Type along with Gorgeous and Music Merci as they move past us for the first time. Ruhlman with Gary Stevens at the rail in front by three parts of a length. And Criminal Type on the outside. Santos is right there in the second spot. Then comes opening verse third. The Philly Gorgeous on the outside is fourth at this point, about five and a half lengths off the lead. With approval along the inside, saves ground fifth. Music Merci on the outside is sixth. At the rail, Misa Selecto with Jerry Bailey saving ground and moving up. Then it's Wind Splitter, followed two back by the long shots to Rose, who's ninth, and on the outside, Silver Survivor, tenth and last, and about 12 lengths off the lead. Moving down the back stretch after the half in 46 and four fifth seconds, and that's two fifths of a second slower than the track record set by Blushing John when he reached the half mile mark. But Ruhlman has not been asked for his big speed yet. He's in front by a length of three quarters. And it's the Calumet horse, Criminal Type, holding the second spot. On the outside, that's opening first, rallying up into the third spot. Me Selecto saving ground at the rail fourth. Music Merci is fifth. Wind Splitter with a rush toward the inside. Now moving to the top of the stretch, and Ruhlman tries to stretch his speed the entire mile in 3 sixteenths. With a quarter of a mile to the finish line, he's in front by a length and a quarter. On the outside, Criminal Type tries to close the gap. Me Selecto at the rail, opening first with McCarran on the outside now moves up third. DeRoche at the rail is fourth. And down the stretch they come. Ruhlman still holding on by a head. Here comes Criminal Type with Jose Santos on the outside. Now those two race for the wire. It's Criminal Type with a short lead. Ruhlman second. Here's the finish. Criminal Type from the Calumet Farm wins it. It's their sixth winner in this race. Ruhlman a second and a photograph for the, the, for the show. And the time on the board, one minute and 53 seconds. That's the record. The track record, the stakes record, a fifth of a second faster than blushing john last year well all right an upset here and it is wayne lucas's criminal type owned by calumet farm the fifth pimlico special victory for calumet farm dave johnson told you about their record a little bit earlier there you see the time 153 flat a track record that is faster than secretariat faster than blushing john now here we are there he is Criminal type, ridden by Jose Santos. And there's Wayne Lucas. Oh, Jim Let's take a look now from the uh, the turn. Once again, we'll point out the weight factor. Ruhlman on the lead, carrying 124 pounds. It pretty well dictated the way the race went all the way. But there you see criminal type making yet another run at him. He tried him once or twice during the race, getting that seven pounds we talked about earlier. This enabled him to turn the tables once before. He does it again nicely. And here he comes through the stretch. He got a little bit of the worst of it at the break, but Jose Santos, first time aboard, criminal type, gets the most from this colt at the end. Ruhlman begins to weaken under that impost. And look who comes along for third. A good steady colt, DeRoche, but he was getting 10 pounds. That's the point of a handicap to bring them all together at the wire. Getting 10 pounds and also going off at 50 to 1 was the horse who finished unofficially third. All this so far unofficial. Of course, Charlie Whittingham being consoled briefly by Wayne Lucas. And there unofficially is 1, 2, 3, criminal type, Ruhlman, and the long shot, DeRoche. Again, the time, 153 flat, a track record at Pimlico. Well, now it's time for ABC's Wide World of Sports Athlete of the Week. This week, the oldest person ever to receive this honor by a lot. ABC's Wide World of Sports Athlete of the Week. Brought to you by Acura Legend and Integra. Precision crafted performance exclusively at your Acura dealer. 
How can an athlete of the week come from a retirement village? Well, she isn't really an athlete, but she's paid her dues in sport for more than half a century. She has owned thoroughbred horses, and last Saturday at age 92, all her dreams came true with trainer Carl Nosker. I look back on it and I, I just can't believe it. Her love of sport is communicated through the flying hooves of unbridled, her horse of a lifetime. Oh, and happy Mother's Day, Mrs. Genter. Uh, entering the backside, she was uh, really sitting well and I thought she was going to do some running and uh, we reached about that four and a half and she started backing up and uh, she just didn't run a race, Jim. I don't know if it was the track or, or what, but she didn't fire at all. Okay, Eddie, thank you very much. All right, Here Jim. we have Wayne Lucas. I just mentioned you went over the $100 million mark. Congratulations on that, too. Thank you. I wish we could have learned how to keep a little of it. <laughs> I saw you the Winter Circle picture shepherding your people around. You, you've gotten to be a pretty good stage manager on that stuff through well, the years. Well, Why don't we take a look? Excuse me. Just take a look sure. at the race. I'll tell Here. you. You know, Jim, the, the, when the gate opened, the first thing that uh, crossed my mind was that we got sandwiched pretty good, and I was very, very concerned about that um, because our strategy was, of course, to stay close to Ruhlman, you know. And when we got hit so hard out of the gate, I thought maybe we were going to be in trouble, but Jose did a great job of getting him up in there and getting him back in contention. It was a beautiful horse race. For a million, it's supposed to be, but it was. It sure was, and uh, he, he, he had good position all along, and... Uh no right. problems, really. I thought that if we could lay within three or four lengths into the first turn here at Pimlico, we had a chance. I mean, Ruman had every opportunity to dictate the race, and I knew that was going to happen. And what we tried to do was stay in touch with him. And once we got off the difficulty of the gate and got into the race pretty good, I thought Jose was in good shape. And when he pulled up, at, you know, crowded him a little at the three-eighths pole, I knew it was going to be a horse race. Okay, thanks very much, Wayne, and good luck in the Black-Eyed Susan next Friday and the Preakness Stakes next Saturday. And congratulations to Calumet Farm on their fifth win in the Pimlico Special. A beautiful afternoon, and look what's happening. The sun is coming out. Here's the complete order of finish. Criminal type, Roman de Roche, B Selecto, and the rest, and the links behind. That's the story on the Pimlico Special of 1990.